Gabriel Rodriguez enjoyed a happy life in Madrid, Spain, with his caring parents. He excelled in school thanks to their support. However, one night, everything changed when he awoke with a severe headache that wouldn't subside. Keep watching to uncover the mister, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to never miss a story. Despite seeking medical help, Gabriel's condition rapidly deteriorated due to a neurological disorder, rendering him immobile and eventually unconscious. His parents, Lucy and Fernando, were heartbroken as they witnessed his declining health. While Fernando tirelessly pursued treatments, Lucy felt overwhelmed and hopeless, struggling with the profound impact of her son's illness on their lives. Gabriel remained in a vegetative state for an extended period, but Fernando held steadfast in his belief that his son would awaken. Meanwhile, Lucia grew increasingly resentful, feeling robbed of their family's happiness. Her frustration led her to say hurtful things to Gabriel as she grappled with the situation and felt neglected by her husband. From that point forward, Lucia stopped visiting the hospital as her pain transformed into deep-seated hatred and disgust. Overwhelmed by her emotions, she attempted to take her own life several times. These crises led Fernando to seek professional help for her mental illness. After months of therapy, she was eventually deemed mentally healthy again. This meant that Fernando and his wife could slowly get back to their normal lives. But without their son, there was a big hole in their lives, and they could only hold out hope for a miracle with his health. As they went back to work, they left their son's care in the hands of the hospital staff. Even though there were talks about taking him off of life support because he had been asleep for so long, but all the talking stopped and a cleaner noticed something very interesting. Their boy had a subtle look on his face that seemed to point to him waking up. Because of the excitement, the maid called the medical team right away. After being unable to move or eat for three years, the boy showed signs of being partially aware. That evening, his parents rushed to his bedside filled with joy to tell him they loved him and were sure he would get better. The boy squeezed his father's hand while tears ran down his face as he spoke words of support. The hospital staff and his father were shocked. Fernando said goodbye to his son for the night and left with his wife. Both of them thrilled about the thought of their son coming home soon, but things didn't go as planned. And despite the initial hopes, the days turned into weeks and Gabriel still wasn't fully awake. The doctor thought Gabriel would wake up quickly from his sleep, but he didn't. He stayed unconscious, which caused his parents more stress. Fernando was torn between hopelessness and determination. He kept going to see his son frequently, fervently praying for his recovery and expressing his pain at seeing him unconscious. Even though he had unwavering faith, Gabriel's health did not get better after two months. Then, on a Saturday morning, the Rodriguez family finally got lucky. While working in their yard, Fernando got a call from the hospital with the good news that their son was stable. They were so relieved that they ran to the hospital right away, where they were shocked to see their son fully awake. It had been more than three years, and they were so happy to see him awake and aware again. But their happiness didn't last long, because Gabriel's first words when he saw his mother were ones of anger and upsetness which made her leave the room. Gabriel, who was by himself with his father and the medical staff, told them the painful truth about how he felt about his mother. Please take her away from me. She never wanted me to wake up. She told me that she wanted me to pass away after that. I can't stand to look at her. When Lucia heard what her son had said, she felt so ashamed and sorry that she couldn't hold back her tears. She finally got the courage to go back to her son's room stand at the doorway and beg him to forgive her on her knees. She deeply regretted her mistakes as a mother, told him she loved him, and begged for another chance to make things right. Gabriel reached out to his mother in tears and asked her to forgive him and understand. He comforted her that he had seen both of his parents work hard while he was in a coma. He praised his father's unwavering support and thanked him for helping him wake up. With tears in their eyes, the family finally got back together. This story teaches an important lesson. No matter how hard things get, sticking with it can lead to redemption in the end. It shows how important it is to be strong and have hope. 
and that even in the worst times, there is always a glimmer of hope. That's all about the first story. And now let's watch another similar story. Any family suffering the loss of a loved one knows how terrible it is. But it's even worse when their passing happens quickly and to someone in the prime of their life. Even though funerals are usually sad events, the next story is about one that ended with something very strange. Natalie and Ivan are a young couple from Ukraine who had been together since college and were thought to be the perfect match. They had been to many places around the world together because they both loved excitement and travel. As soon as Natalie found out she was pregnant with their daughter, Pina, they decided to settle down and become parents. Their time together was full of love, fun, and wonderful memories that they will always treasure. People in their group looked up to them because they had an unbreakable bond. Natalie loved every moment she had with her little girl and especially loved taking long walks in the park. Ivan really wanted to join them, but his work schedule kept him from going often. Since Pina was born, Ivan has been the only one providing for the family while Natalie has been taking care of their daughter. One day, while Natalie and Pina were taking a stroll in the park, all of a sudden Natalie felt dizzy. At first, she thought it was because she hadn't eaten breakfast, but she kept going until the feeling got worse, which caused her to pass out as she reached for a juice bottle at a booth. People walking by rushed to help her because they were shocked by what they saw. Right away, an ambulance was called, and Natalie and her baby Pina were taken to the emergency room. Ivan quickly went to the hospital after being told about it. Natalie was found with severe anemia after medical tests. Severe anemia means that Natalie does not have enough red blood cells or hemoglobin to oxygenate her body's tissues properly. At first, the discovery brought some comfort, but it didn't last long because doctors soon learned that Natalie's rare blood type made treatment difficult. Even though they tried hard, the hospital couldn't find a good blood transfusion donor in the area, which made things very dangerous. To save Natalie's life, they had to get the blood they needed from another city, which made Ivan's wait at the hospital with their daughter even worse. A matching blood donor was finally found after several tense hours, and the medical team moved quickly to give the needed transfusion. There was a moment of hope when Natalie reacted well to the treatment, but this hope was dashed when Natalie started shaking violently, which showed her heart was having a hard time. Natalie had a heart attack despite everyone's best efforts to save her. Ivan was devastated, and their baby was left without a mother. Ivan had to raise their daughter by himself while dealing with his sadness, which was a hard thing to do. Ivan strongly refused the idea of an autopsy because he couldn't stand the thought of Natalie's body being looked at in such an invasive way. He decided to remember her in his own way instead. With the weight of his sadness on him, Ivan found strength and comfort in the people at church. Their help was a lifeline for him in his darkest times, giving him comfort as he dealt with the trials of his new life. Although Natalie's absence left a huge hole, Ivan made up his mind to be strong for their daughter. He planned to do this by remembering the good times they had together. Even though Ivan was very sad, he had to cry and plan the funeral for his wife. But even though he was in a lot of pain, he was very thankful that his friends Petra and Artem took care of his daughter. They took care of Ivan because they knew he needed time to deal with his sadness and make plans, which made his life easier. The priest at the church, Father Yerbach, had carefully set up everything for Natalie's burial. He comforted Ivan and his daughter and prayed with them that they would have the strength to deal with their terrible loss. Even though everyone in the community was always there for Ivan, Ivan's friends and co-workers worried about his health and told him to get professional help and talk about his feelings and happy memories of Natalie. The church was full of sadness and grief on the day of the funeral, and an emotional service brought many people to tears. Ivan, who sat with his daughter in the front row, was one of them. The priest was trying to comfort both the family and the community with a moving speech when a woman's voice cut in during the final blessing. Nicole's sister, Daniela, had come from Kiev that morning but couldn't find a seat in the church. The audience was shocked by her sobs as she longed to see her sister's face one last time. The priest told the pallbearers to open the box because he knew Daniela was in a lot of pain. But while the pallbearers were moving to get the tools, 
The audience heard bumps, scratches, and a scream that was hard to make out. Even though the room was quiet, the priest, who was standing with Daniela and Ivan closest to the coffin, heard something scary. With every sound, the box moved a little. He screamed for the pallbearers to hurry up as if time was running out. Soon after, the coffin's lid was lifted, showing an amazing sight to Ivan and the priest. Daniela and Ivan were shocked to find Natalie still alive inside the coffin. Natalie's sister was so upset that she couldn't believe she was still alive and was holding Natalie's hand tightly. Doctors were called right away, and Natalie was quickly taken to the hospital. The pulse tracking device had not picked up on the fact that she had been in a deep coma until she was examined. After some time, it was found that the device had broken, which is what caused the wrong passing announcement. In the end, Natalie's miraculous escape showed how powerful faith can be and how important it is to never give up hope. Her family and friends were so happy to see her again, and the experience made her realize how important it is to enjoy life and never take it for granted. Also, the event led to important changes in medical processes and tools that will keep another tragedy from happening. As the story for today ends, kindly consider subscribing to our channel and pressing the like button if you enjoyed it. We'll see you again in the next one.